as I'm audible and clear. Thank you so much. OK, so before we could begin with our session today, what we covered in last class, what did we cover in last class? We covered, uh, we, covered we discussed on the crucifixion of Christ. We also discussed on the four points. We have been identified in the crucifixion of Christ, and then buried with Christ, resurrected with Christ, and then the fourth one, been raised into the heavenly realm with Christ, and we are seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ. So we know our identity and our position. So I, along with this identity and position, we have certain authority. OK, so keeping that in mind, we are moving on to the next chapter. We are on page 66. We so can turn to page 66. Section 6 talks about the spirit of life in Christ. Now we are going to talk about our life in Christ, the spirit of life in Christ. So even before I could start, let's begin the session with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Time and again, Lord, we're able to come into your presence with heart of thanks and praise. Lord, I lift up each and every student from our class into your hands. We pray that you will give us the mind of understanding. Lord, you'll open our mind where we can understand the hidden secrets of your word, we can identify ourselves in you, O oh Father. We know the inheritance that we have in you, O oh Lord. Father, as we discuss on various aspects that we have been identified in you, I pray for the clarity in sharing your word. And also we pray that you will give each of us the understanding of your word, O oh Father. I pray that you will open our mind and our hearts, and our hearts be uh, prepared as a good ground, Lord, to receive your word. Thank you, Lord, for doing it so. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. OK. So in this, in this session today, we're going to discuss on the spirit of life. So let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. We're going to discuss on various verses from this one chapter. So I request everyone to turn to Romans chapter 8, and we will go verse by verse, OK, to understand better. So when we say, that when we receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior, we have been born as a new creation. We have been identified in Christ and we have this newness of life in Christ. So this new and the wonderful life that we have in Christ has been much more presented, presented well by Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8. OK, so where we can see there's life in the spirit. And there's also life in flesh. So we're going to see the contrast between life in the spirit and life in the flesh and how we can understand better and how we can apply and how we can feed the life in the spirit so that we can inherit all the blessings that the scripture has for us, that God has for each of us. OK, so let's read verse 1 Romans chapter 8 verse 1 thank you Anand so what we read here is there is therefore now no condemnation there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit you see there's a condition there there is no condemnation only when you don't walk according to the flesh or there is no condemnation when we walk according to the spirit 
So when you are, it's a simple declaration of no condemnation that comes to those who are in Christ Jesus. So when we are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Why? Because we have, our, uh, we have this newness of life in us. In last class, we, we studied that the old body, the old nature, the sinful nature, the flesh nature is dead in Christ. And now when something is dead, that has no power, isn't it? No matter what special food we prepare and we keep near the dead person and we tell him, hey, come on, get up, eat. Can he eat? No, because he's been dead to it. The same way we need to believe. We need to believe the old nature. The old nature that was in us has no more power in us now. Why? Because we are in Christ now. When we are in Christ, the old nature has no power over us. It has no power. It has lost its grip. Now, how does that happen? We need to renew our mind. We need to believe on what the scripture says. Because the word of God has the power. The word has the power to remove that does not belong to him, his nature. And renew us. Get this fruit of the spirit grow in us. So that can only happen when we renew our mind and allow the Spirit of the Lord to work in and through us. So here it says, so God the Father does not condemn Jesus. Does God condemn Jesus? Does the scripture tell us that way? No. So God does not condemn Jesus. Now because God does not condemn Jesus, we who have been identified in Christ, we who have been inside Christ are not been condemned by the Father. Because when Father sees us, He sees Jesus in us. Did you get that? Now we are identified in Jesus. This is what John 15 says, right? When you abide in me, I abide in you. We become one in Christ. We need to believe that. We are one in Christ and we are not alone. So because the Father does not condemn Jesus, neither can the Father condemn those who are in Christ. So there's no condemnation when we are in Christ Jesus. You got it? There is no condemnation when we are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because when Father looks at us, He looks Jesus in us. He looks Jesus through us. So Paul here refers, the very start of this verse, you see there is called something called therefore. That means there's something before that. We need to look into it. So Paul, Paul's therefore, Paul mentioning here, therefore, means that is there is something important in the scripture. We need to look into it. So what is that? It means that what he says comes from a very logical argument or uh, there is a beginning. He begins saying, I can prove what I say here. So this is what he proves. If we are one with Jesus, he is our head. You got it? If we are one with Jesus, he is our head. We give him the importance. We give him the priority. So we cannot be condemned. So in Christ, the phrase introduces that there is a mystical and a spiritual union here between the Christ and the believer. What is that? Sometimes we express Christ being in them that is christ in us but here in this verse if you see we are in christ we are inside christ you got it 
we are inside Christ. The last class, I gave you an illustration of uh, a blazer. When we wear blazer, the blazer surrounds us. Yes or no? Same way we have been inside Christ. So we insert Christ in us. You know, we have been inserted in Christ. So when Father looks at us, he looks at Christ and then we are inside him. You got it? So Christ is inside every believer by his spirit and believers are in Christ by faith. You got it? We are in Christ. John 15 says, as I abide in you and you abide in me, we are one. So when Father looks at us, he looks at Jesus. And that's why Paul says here, there is no condemnation. Why? Because Father is not condemning Jesus. Because now Father seeing Jesus in us, he cannot condemn us. And he can see Jesus in and through us. So, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The scripture says, we do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. What happens? We do not perceive the things that which we were doing before. But now, because we are in Christ, we do things that pleases God. We do not take the grace of God for granted. Right? The old nature. And here, we do things that pleases God. So what is this flesh nature? According to the flesh, what does Paul talks about the flesh? What, what does it mean? Anyone from the online? The scripture, uh, verse 1 says, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. What does Paul mean by this? Flesh is nothing but a nature, an old man. So here Paul is very clearly saying that we do not follow the old nature or we do not walk according to our flesh, but according to the new man, the spirit of the Lord. We heed to him and we walk according to him. That's why there is no condemnation because the law of the spirit of life the scripture says, let me read that, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, we are in verse 2, okay? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, has set me free from with, from whom? From the law of sin and death. So what does this <clears throat> law of sin and death mean? Anyone in the class? Law of sin and death. Suppression. Okay, suppression of our condemnation from the wrongs that we do. We are feeling guilty, we have been condemned by the nature, by the old nature, what we go through. Yes. <clears throat> so we see the law of sin and death, something very strong. And it is the absolute law. But we see that every sin that we commit, in every cemetery, cemetery that we see proves that there is a law of sin and death because the scripture also says the wages of sin is death. But the law of spirit is life, enduring life, eternal life. How? Because we have it in Christ. And that is much stronger than the law of sin and death. So the law of spirit 
frees us from the law of sin and death because that is much stronger because Jesus conquered death. He has victory over the death and he has rose again. He's been seated at the right hand of the Father. He has conquered it. So through Christ, we have the victory. So the law of the Spirit, which is much stronger, frees us from the law of sin and death. With that, we will move on to the next scripture. It says, free from the law of sin. And then we will move on, free from the law of death. We move on to verse 4 and 5. It talks about walking according to the spirit of life. How can we walk according to the spirit of life? How can we walk according to the spirit of life? How can we walk according to the spirit of life, anyone? In the class, we see in verse 3. Can anyone read verse 3? Thank you, thank you. So verse 3 says, Romans chapter 8, verse 3 says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. But God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh. So what do we see here? You see, the law cannot do many things. Why? What are the things the law can do? The law can guide us, instruct us, share knowledge, teach us. The law can tell us about God's character. Right? The Ten Commandments. Law can tell us about God's character, uh, but, sorry, yeah, what is uh, right from wrong? Law can teach us, guide us, and tell us God's character, but the law cannot give energy to our flesh. The law cannot give life to our flesh. The law can give us the standard to live, but it cannot give us the power to please God. You got it? Because it will condemn us. Hey, you have done wrong. This is not right. Isn't it? So this is where a scholar called Morris Manson is quoting, Moses' law has right, but not might. Moses' law? as right but not might sin's law has might but not right again i repeat moses law has right but not might sin's law has might but not right but then the law of the spirit the law of the Spirit has both right and might. I'll post that quote for you all. I just post it on the chat for an understanding. Yeah. So Moses' law has a right but not might. And sin's law, sin's law, has might but not right, but the law of the Spirit has both right and might. Here we see, though we see in the scripture, the law 
is weak to us because we are weak to it. The sun cannot give light to the blind eyes. Can the sun give light to the blind eyes? Not from any impotency in itself, but from the incapacity of the subject, it shines upon. So in that, it was that weak through the flesh. So in the scripture, when it when it says weak through the flesh, that means the law is weak because it speaks about flesh. So it comes to fleshy men and speaks to them as fleshy men. But when the work of the Spirit transforms us, how? By the crucifixion of the old man, and it imparts the new man a principle higher than the flesh. When our old man is dead, we have the new man risen in us, and he has much power, much potential than the old man. The old man is a sinful man, is related to the flesh. But the new man is a spirit man who's been connected to the new life in Christ. And he is much stronger than the old person. That's why Paul clearly says, your old nature is gone, is dead. And the new man, the newness in you has much power than the old man. The enemy may come and remind you, hey, this, these are the things that cannot leave you. But then you remind the enemy, the old nature that is in me is dead and that has no power. And I am in the spirit and Jesus is in me. The scripture also says, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. So every time the temptation knocks at your mind, you need to remind him just like how Jesus said it is written. Tell the scripture to him and he will flee from you. Remind yourself the new nature that is in Christ in you because he is much greater. He is much powerful. And he does things that pleases God. And he helps you to focus on what God has called you. That's nothing but the Holy Spirit who's indwelling with us. The Holy Spirit who dwells in us will lead us to, more, to be more like Jesus. Be more like Jesus. So walking according to the spirit of life is intentional. We need to intention, we need to decide, we need to make a decision that I'm not going to give power to the, to, the, uh, uh, to the nature of my flesh, but then I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to walk in the newness of life. It is the decision that we make so that we can cultivate the spirit to be spiritually minded. We can renew our mind and lead our life that pleases God. So with that, we will move on to the next scripture, verse 9, to be led in the spirit. What it means to be led in the spirit. So we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. One minute. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. Very clear. But if you are not in the flesh, that means you are in the Spirit. The new nature, the newness of God is in you. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, that means the Spirit of God. When we receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior, you see the Spirit of the Lord indwelling with us. He who dwells in us will lead us, will lead us by ministering to us. So what happens is, as per Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 and 24, we see that when the Spirit of the Lord is indwelling in us, we walk in the Spirit. We have this new life in Him where we desire to please God. So when we desire to please God, we start living in the Spirit. 
that means we try to heal to the spirit we try to listen to him we try to please god in every area of our life so let's move on to verse 12 and 13 same chapter romans 8 verse 12 and 13 says therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live so what is it much before that verse we also read in romans 7 20 to 25 romans 7 verse 20 to 25 what does it say now if i do what i will not to do it is no longer i who do it but sin that dwells in me see that talking about the weakness that we have paul is you know very practical he's very practical I know what is right and I know what is wrong. But then, though I desire to do the right things, but because my flesh is weak, I land up doing that is not right in God's sight. So here you see, I find in the law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good. Next verse. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So what we see, anyone who has tried to being good can understand this, isn't it? It is always a struggle. It's always a struggle for us. Because we are striving, we are striving to be good, to please God. But then the more and more I try, I tend to fail. Why? Because we are still the human nature. This is what Paul is also saying in chapter 7, Romans chapter 7. He's saying, though I know right from wrong, though I know what pleases God, I desire to do the will of God. I have this desire. But then more and more I try, I fail. But then, there is a war against the law of mind. And, you know, brings me into captivity to the law of sin. So what is trying to tell you? Paul is stating, our old man, the old nature. We are not forgotten, right? We know, we remember. And he is real man. But we need to remember the old man is dead. He has no power. So the flesh is not real. The flesh is destined to pass away. But when we are in Christ, it has the power to be resurrected. So this new man, the new nature, what we have in Christ, that nature is real because that carries life. That carries life in Christ. And now Paul challenges us to live life pleasing God. Because God has given us the grace. God is giving us the strength. And we are not alone. He's saying when we strive to please God with your own strength, is then when you fail. But when you take the help of the Spirit who is living inside you, you see the strength to overcome that old nature. You can overcome that old nature. How? By renewing our mind and knowing that the old man is dead and you know the new man. You, you have this newness of life in Christ within you. And that has the strength, that has the power to overcome this old nature. So there is a war that happens. There's always a battle in our mind. But you need to overcome that battle by the word. You need to overcome the battle knowing that Christ lives in you. By knowing, we can overcome the battle. Why? Because there is power in this new life. There is power in the new man. That's why the word says, greater is he who is in you. Greater one is in you. 
you are not alone you are much stronger much bigger much capable than what we can think of us so in the verse he also says oh wretched man that i am who will deliver me from this body we are still in uh, romans chapter 7 says oh wretched man that i am who will deliver me who can deliver me from this body because it is a recurring sometimes you think i don't want to do but you see time and again the temptation comes to keep falling failing So we see in the ancient, there's a Greek word for this wretched. It's more literally saying wretched through the exhaustion of hard labor. When we do the hard labor, so weak we would have gone. So Paul is completely worn out by trying on himself to be right, to be pleasing with God. And so he calls himself like wretched because of his unsuccessful effort to please God under the principle of law. We fail. We cannot please God. We cannot keep up that law. But it is worth bearing in mind just like how the great saints through the ages, uh, um, you know, uh, do not commonly say like how good I am. They don't boast the goodness in them. When they write about them, they don't boast the goodness, but then they are apt to regret the sinful nature that is in them. They say, Lord, please help me. Help me overcome. So we are here. The scripture also says, who will deliver me? So Paul's perspective finally turns to something outside himself so paul says he he referred about himself 40 times in the romans he says in the spite of his unsu unsuccessful struggle against sin paul became entirely self-focused and self-obsessed why he comes to this place of any delivery living under the law so who looks self and personal performance rather than looking first to christ so when we look at ourselves and try to overcome or please God, we fail. We cannot keep up the law. But when we look at Jesus, when we look at him, when we look at the spirit of life who is indwelling in us, we can overcome. So he concludes like this. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So Paul shows that even though the law is glorious and good, it cannot save us. The law cannot save us. We need a savior. We needed a savior. So Paul is stating us to look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. So Jesus stands between us and God. This is what Paul is saying. The law cannot save us. We need a savior. And Paul is saying, we have Jesus. He's pointing Now he's pointing us to Jesus, who is between us and God. So bridging the gap and providing a way to God. So when we accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior, we have the spirit of adoption with us where we can call Father as Abba Father. We see the relationship has been restored back through Jesus, only through Jesus. There is no other mediator. There is no other mediator between man or God. There's only one man, Jesus, where we can be identified, where our relationship has been restored back with God and we can call Abba Father. So we need to heal to the Spirit. So we are back to Romans chapter 8, verse 12 and 13. We see that we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. So this flesh gave us nothing good. 
isn't it flesh nature or the nature of man does not bring anything good so we have no ob obligation to pamper it so there's no need for us to pamper the flesh nature our death is to the lord and not to the flesh so the uh, next line says for if you live according to the flesh you will die isn't it the world nature it leads to death but then if you live according to the spirit when we put to death the deeds of the body this is what the scripture says when we put to death the deeds of the body that means what when we forcefully put the sinful nature that is in man to death we can only do it by the power of god we can only do it by the spirit of life that is in us so that we may lead a life that is pleasing god so how by listening to the spirit by yielding to the spirit we need to lead our life it may not be very easy it is a very disciplined life a life that may um go through a lot of sacrifices to discipline us but when you go through it you see the life life in abundance so we are led by the spirit of god verse 14 says for as many are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god so they are sons of god so we see that as we yield to the spirit and as we are led by the spirit as we walk in the spirit we see that we are we are we are walking in the sonship with god we are healing to god that pleases him so paul didn't say as many as go to church are called sons of god does he say like that in the scripture oh you're going to church every day so you are the sons of god i see you uh, bible college student read scripture every day so you are sons of god does he say that or you're taking communion every day no you relate yourself you take communion every day so you are sons of god no he very clearly says the spirit of the lord who's in dwelling with you when you listen to that spirit when you healed to the spirit and when you're led by the spirit you are sons of god what does it mean you're led by the spirit remember one thing the holy spirit who is new will always lead you to jesus will always lead you to do that pleases god he will not take you away from jesus away from god or something that is contrary to the word of god okay holy spirit will always lead us to what pleases god so those who are led by the spirit are the sons of god so we need to be led by the spirit so when how does the holy spirit lead us how does the holy spirit lead us what does the scripture say we are led by his guidance we are led by drawing with him when we have a relationship with the holy spirit you know he is ministering to you our ears our mind our heart has been tuned to his voice you see we are led by his guidance we are led by drawing we are led by his governing authority and we are led as we cooperate with him he leads us now as we know that he is leading now where does the holy spirit lead us anyone from the class you can post your comments on the chat where does holy spirit lead us surya i see your hand been lifted is there any question sorry i hadn't seen it before okay great okay so where does holy spirit lead us where does the holy spirit lead us 
confession prince anyone vimal purification repentance yes forgiveness what did you say sanctification purify us yes anyone from online we lead us through the word of god lead us through righteousness he leads us to god and his will anyone from this side shri radha rain neena anyone okay holy spirit renews our mind how does he lead us does he lead us into holy inner voice he leads us to the inner voice with his love so where does he leads us he leads us to jesus anyone else okay do we see that the holy spirit leads us into repentance giving us the mindset hey this is not right this does not please god do we see that have we come across that so holy spirit leads us to repentance does holy spirit make us think little of ourselves and more of jesus in us does he allow us to give glory to god in every area of our life does he how about you all does the holy spirit leads us into truth because the scripture says know the truth and the truth will set you free so does he leads us to the truth so that we have been freed from our old nature does the holy spirit lead us into love isn't it does the holy spirit lead us to holiness because our god is holy and he is encouraging us to be more holy i mean uh, to be like more like god in his holiness in his likeness does the holy spirit lead us into usefulness where we can be uh, where we can where we can be that instrument of his work a vessel of honor you see yourself le been led in that way you see yourself in a new image a new identity and also you have been recognized by others that you are not the same what you were before there is something different in you you may look the same height weight color you know maybe the weight may change depending on what we do okay but then we look the same but there's something different people around us will notice that you are not the same the way you think the way you act the way you speak everything changes because there is a new person a god nature who's indwelling with you and he is much greater than the one who's in the world we see that we have been led by the spirit so we haven't covered the whole chapter we just covered till romans 8 chapter 14 that is till 56 page 68 we will continue studying in the next class on the remaining scriptures and surya has also said that we are led to connect with god yes we are led to a new relationship with god so with that we will end this class with a word of prayer can i request one of one of them to pray from our online class anyone karen are you ready can you pray yes pastor Okay. <laughs> okay, Surya, you can go ahead. Unmute and pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for leading us. Wonderful class, and uh, thank you with us uh, the whole whole class. And thank you for giving strength to know more about your word. And uh, thank you for being with us in every situation and every case. Uh, and thank you for leading us till from starting to ending so 
thank you for everything thank you amen 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 thank you so much for praying thank you each one for joining in today's session i hope it was a time of blessing and god bless have a good weekend see you all next class next week god bless